We're now joined by WITS University Honorary International Relations Professor John Stremler. Prof, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Uh, welcome to the program as always. Thank you, Peter. So, I suppose it's not a shock that he's running, uh, but people are wondering about the timing. What does that tell us? Well, it tells you that he's preoccupied with himself. As we all know, that's Donald Trump's number one issue, and he wants to extract vengeance, and he also wants to stay out of jail. And it's going to complicate, as your report suggested, uh, his judicial prosecution, and that, from his standpoint, is a, is, is a good thing. What uh, I didn't hear enough of was the announcement that, um, that being in your report, the announcement went on for an hour. It was only supposed to be for 30 minutes, and it was rambling. He did not have any Republican Party leaders in Mar-a-Lago for this announcement. And uh, it uh, was full of, which has now been fact-checked, I, I, I saw 20 just outright fabrications, misleading statements uh, that were like the 85 billion that was left behind the military equipment in Afghanistan, which is wrong. And uh, his, his claim that everything was great under his administration, what about the 3 million COVID deaths? You know, uh, it, was, it, was, it was just shocking. So he really makes up things as we go along. And that's why a news program like this one is so important to make sense out of what the facts are. We're all entitled to our opinions, but what are the facts? However, there's a good chunk of America that believe those non-facts. That's certainly true. And he's got some... Uh, of his acolytes were elected to the House of Representatives. But by and large, his Senate candidates that he backed, with one exception, J.D. Vance, um, all, all uh, lost yesterday and lost big time in, in, in a crucial way. Uh, John Fetterman uh, in Pennsylvania beat this uh, Mehmet Oz, uh, who's a TV star and uh, was a, a Trumpian and very much a Trumpian. And Fetterman did it by going into rundown neighborhoods and appealing to people's real concerns about their economic situation, about their aspirations. He, he, he was responsive. And, and the Democrats are more, have been traditionally cast as elitists, but the, the party used to be much more attuned to the working man mm -hmm. and women. Uh, and so that will be, I think, the case going forward. And Trump's popularity is ebbing. I, I saw this in the elections last week. I, I thought that the Republicans would do much better. Uh, historically, they have. It's only been uh, four times since 1906 that uh, uh, an incumbent president uh, has not uh, lost control of the Congress in the first midterm. And, uh, and, and while he did lose the House of Representatives, it's very, very narrow. It must be seven, seven to nine seats. It's not fully settled. And in the, the Senate, the, 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 the Democrats will, will keep control. It's still very polarized, but it's shifting. And it was shifting in this election as we saw in the voting. So has a moment in time come for the Repu Republican Party for a period of time, there were those that knew better, and I'll say that inverted commas, I don't want to editorialize, but they were just too scared of Donald Trump. Has that fear yes, started exactly to wane? Right. Yes, it seems to have. It seems to have. But don't forget, um, politics is about uh, power, and these guys are trying to sniff out what his constituency means. There are lots of democratic deficits in the U.S. system, including the primary system, which was, in, which was inserted so that candidates could stand and be accountable to the public in, in preliminary elections before you pick the nominees at the state level. And it's, it's winner take all. And so consequently, if you have six or seven candidates for primaries, Trump comes along and wins 20% or 25% or 30%, 
he get, it sometimes is enough to get a plurality and he gets those delegates, all of them. So that's again, there's an electoral reform and count bill which is pending before the US Congress that it's gonna be taken up in December while, before the Democrats lose control. And we'll see whether it passes. Uh, we have an electoral reform bill here that's pending. It's got a lot of problems, as we know, and the parties are trying to game that just like the parties are trying to game uh, in the U.S. Uh, elections. And it's incumbent upon independent authorities and the public to demand electoral integrity. What do you think has contributed to this uh, slide in Trump's popularity? What events? Was it January 6th? Was it him losing his Twitter account? What do you think contributed to, to, to this loss of, of, of base? Well, the data has yet to be <laughs> fully mined, but you've already identified uh, some key indicators. And, and, and yes, uh, uh, he, he's, he's a loser, first of all. He's, he, he no longer has the shock of surprising everyone with a win. And uh, his campaign is now much more modest than it was in 2016, and certainly that uh, was very expensive in 2020. Didn't didn't win him, but he did get a lot of votes. But he he fell seven million nationally short, and then uh, finally lost in the electoral college by a much thinner uh, uh, margin. Uh, and and that that's what he's been trying to deny uh, Joe Biden the uh, the election. But the integrity of the election was 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 fine in 2020 and by the way last week uh, for all of the rhetoric about the uh, uh, stolen elections that would occur in, in Arizona and other states it didn't happen it just did not happen so far we've had a couple of glitches but th that happens in any election but not not nothing serious nothing systemic systemic no court cases so I think he's he's a spent force, to Peter. At least I pray to God he is a spent force. But America is still a very polarized country, transforming itself to a more diverse country. And that's going to uh, have to be played out. And the Republicans are going to have to, if they're going to win elections, they're going to have to find a way to reach into other communities, Hispanics, Blacks, uh, uh, Asians, and, 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 and women particularly, um, then, then the, the Democrats and the Democrats are going to have to play the same game, but they're in a better shape today to do that. And the Republicans are in a mess. All right. That was actually my next question. What does this mean for the Democrats? Um, Joe Biden was expecting to be wounded quite, uh, almost mortally in these midterms. Um, and you know, he took over as president and he got hit by COVID global recession, uh, oil prices going up because of Ukraine, and he's taking the hits for all of this. Um, so it's easy to say under Bush, I mean, under Biden, things fall apart. Does he have time to paint a new picture? And will he be well, rubbing his hands if Donald Trump is his oppos opposition? Well, uh, you said a lot there. Um, <laughs> the, 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 the fact is, that um, the day before the election, they, they Ipso did a, 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 a poll, which is credible, uh, and it found that the approval rating of Joe Biden was 39%. Under any normal circumstances, there would have been a blowout by the Republican opposition party in the by-election, the, the midterm election. It happened to Obama in his, 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 his midterm. It happened to Trump in his midterm. It didn't happen this time. Why? because I think that the voters were so concerned in swing states of abortion issue, which the politicized Supreme Court that he, he, he packed, the Trump pact, remember, with the three, uh, three appointees, um, overrode Roe v. Wade for, with abortion rights, which we have in our constitution here in South Africa, by the way. So um, uh, they, this is not an issue that should be debated right now, in my view, but it was. And women came out and voted and they said inflation is one thing, but women's rights, is, it takes precedent. And then the election denials. Um, people realize that if you don't have rules of the game, elections can't be respected, then you, you can't have confidence that you can have a peaceful transfer of power. 
And by Trump refusing to accept Joe Biden's election, which was credible and certified in 2020, I think people got fed up in key states. Still, the, the Republican stronghold states did produce some Trump uh, wannabes that will now be in the, in the Congress. But that's a problem mm. for a narrowly divided uh, Congress to deal with. And, and uh, uh, I, I think that Joe Biden, who turns 80 on Sunday, would be 86 after the second term. And I think there'll be a lot of pressure on him if anyone other than uh, Donald Trump runs. If Donald Trump runs, I think it would be hard for Biden not to sort of step up to the plate and say he wants to beat him second time. And I think he probably could. But um, I would rather see a younger, younger generation of Democrats step up and, and a younger generation of Republicans step up and get back to politics as normal. One gets a sense then that um, the Republicans are looking for uh, a move away from the extremes, the, the ultra uh, uh, maggots and that kind of thing. Um, I, I watched Rishi Sunak in the United Kingdom warn about what Liz Truss's consequences were going to be. He ended up being vindicated and I'm looking at Liz Cheney and I'm wondering if a similar scenario will play out. Will there be a rise for her, do you think? I don't think so, Peter. She deserves it because she's been very courageous in standing up and she's made this a cause celeb of her personal life and more power to her. I was opposed to her policies in the old days, but I was very grateful for her joining the January 6th special committee. And um, it, it, the, the realities are such in the U.S. system that there would have to be a sorting out of the party probably beaten a couple of times and then get new leadership and work that through. It doesn't happen overnight. There's not someone who comes in and and Rusi Sunak is in, in Brit Britain is not home free by any means. He was picked by a very small minority of of, uh, of, of conservative parliamentarians. He does not have a national legitimacy yet. He is cleaning up the system and I, I applaud what he's trying to do. However, um, politics ought to be grounded in, 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 in greater deliberation, more inclusive deliberation than looking for a quick re repair job by a Liz Cheney or someone coming in on a, on a white horse. Um, but but, but uh, uh, the, the, the politics between now and 2024 could change. We could, we could, you and I could have this conversation several times. And as I joke all the time, if you could tell me what's going to happen at NASRIC, I'll tell you what's going to happen in 2024 in the United States. All right. We've run out of time, but there is one question completely away from the Americas. And uh, this incident in Poland, how do we make sense of this? Uh, do we have any clarity of where this missile came from? There's suggestions it could have even been Ukrainian. Uh, I think the, the plausible explanation I've heard is that it, it, it was a, uh, a missile directed at an incoming Russian missile and uh, it went awry. Uh, it was an accident. Biden was very cautious about this and that's what we all should do. We should wait for the data, Peter, mm -hmm. and not, not rush to judgment. I mean, I know that news deadlines are such that people want to come up with answers, but I think in some, some cases it's just helpful to deliberate uh, and, and find the facts, and we haven't got all the facts yet. All right. Prof, always great talking to you. These are interesting times that we're living through. Indeed. Thank you. All right, that's uh, Professor John Stremelo, who's a visiting professor at uh, Wits University in International Relations.